morning and welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal Church. This is our regular Sunday morning virtual service. We are glad that you could join us. Today is Sunday, July the 5th, 2020, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Happy Independence Day weekend. Just a couple of announcements in the life of the church. Our altar flowers today lovely red, white, and blue are provided by the Dugan Fund in celebration of Independence Day. We invite you to join us for our virtual coffee hour, which takes place uh, shortly after the service around noon. Uh, you'll find a link to the Zoom meeting in the morning email that went out today. If you have not received that, um, or you haven't signed up for that in the past, please send us your name and email address to virtualcoffeehour at stpetersconway.com and we'll get you into that loop. Um, finally, um, if you're interested in doing any of the readings for the Sunday service or participating in any of our evening services, please contact Greg or me and we will be happy to get you set up to help with that. Um, it's a great blessing for other people to hear others read. And so we hope that, that some of you will, will volunteer to, to help us in that effort. Our processional hymn this morning is number 516, Come Down, O Love Divine. Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, begins on page 2 in your worship bulletin or on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The servant said to Laban, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Leroyhoi and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field. And looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up. And when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We will now read from Psalm 45, verses 11 to 18. These can be found on page 5 in your worship bulletin or can be found on page 648 in the Book of Common Prayer. Hear, O daughter, consider, consider and, and listen, listen closely. closely. Forget, Forget your, your people and, and your, your father's house. The, the king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master. Therefore, do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All the glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is cloth of gold. In embroidered apparel, she is brought to the king. After her bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness they are brought. And enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes all of all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore nations will praise you forever and ever. A reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know nothing, for I know that nothing good dwells within me that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our, lo our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We have played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son reveals to him. Come to me, all that you are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy 
and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Good morning, and happy day after Independence Day. And like so much of this year, it's a July 4th weekend that I don't think we'll forget anytime soon. And it's traditional to take a moment this weekend to reflect on our freedoms. It's something we all too easily take for granted. When we compare our freedom with the plight of the Uyghur Muslims in China, or our Wisdom House friends in Syria, or our LGBT brothers and sisters in Chechnya, we realize we have so much, so very much to be thankful for. But in both Paul's letter to the Romans today and also today's gospel reading from Matthew, we're confronted with what might seem the opposite of freedom. We come face to face with our servanthood, our, our confinement, and this time it's to sin. Paul cries out, for example, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. But it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. Now, Paul has a habit of raining on any parade, even a Fourth of July one. And here he spells out in no uncertain terms that our freedom is an illusion because we are all too easily caught up in sin's snares. You see, sin for Paul is, is not simply a matter of breaking a rule or two, but it is a completely distorted relationship. Think of it like a cancer that dwells deep within the soul, ready to be an active, aggressive power that moves us from being God-centered to being self-centered. It distorts our focus. And I imagine as he was writing this, Paul was reflecting on his great sin, the persecution of the body of Christ. And we see how his single-minded attention to following the law, to following Torah, guided him away from what was right. What should have brought him closer to God actually led him to persecute God. It took his Damascus moment and the scales falling from his eyes to realize how deeply he had been distorted from God's path. Even for Paul, his supposedly ethical actions were twisted by sin toward death-dealing ends. And Paul spends a lot of time talking about the law, about the Torah, and that can seem a little antiquated to us right now. The issue of following Old Testament guidance on living doesn't dominate our daily lives the way it did for Paul. But we each have our own ethics, our own guide for living, even if it's an internal collection of do's and don'ts. See, that's our version of the law, our version of Torah. And Paul's saying even that can easily get distorted by sin. Even our best intentions can get distorted, can get twisted by sin. And we spent a good deal of time in the past weeks talking about George Floyd's death and the ensuing protests that took place around the world. It's dominated the news cycle and creating a, created a surprising array of positive responses. Confederate statues being removed, NASCAR in the state of Mississippi removing Confederate flags, a relook at policing practices around the country and around the world. But as I reflected on Paul's assertion that even our best intentions, our ethics can get twisted by sin, I was drawn to think about the four police officers involved in Mr. Floyd's death. Now, they've already been tried and convicted in the court of public opinion, but, but driven by Paul or inspired by Paul. I wanted to make space for redemption or at least self-recognition in their acts. And I've come to think that 
I don't believe that any of them, even the lead instigator, were bad people. I mean, for one of them, it was like the second day on the job. He barely knew what was going on. I believe they were simply doing what they thought was the right thing under the circumstances. They were following their internal laws, their ethics at that moment. And if you watch the video, you see it in their faces. They aren't hiding, they aren't ashamed. They're following their understanding of the law. Just like Paul was following his ethic, his Torah, to persecute the early Christians. Now we can watch the tape of the event now and almost witness in real time how the law has been perverted been twisted into something that no longer supports good, but is enslaved by evil. And Paul t tells us, when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. We have to be ever vigilant that our good intentions aren't warped toward evil's ends, but also recognize that despite our vigilance, they probably will be. Paul's letter to the Romans is so dark that that I felt compelled to pivot to the gospel reading to find a message suitable to Independence Day. You know, a good old fashioned freedom filled message, a message worthy of the Stars and Stripes celebrations. And at first, there's some comfort in the familiar, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But a yoke is hardly an image of independence, no matter how easy or how light. And maybe that's the point, that as Christians, we aren't meant to be truly free, at least not in the individualistic, self-directed sense that we've taken it to mean here in this country, that through our baptism, we're tied down to each other and to God in permanent, in permanent relationship, in covenant. Now, Peggy likes to depict covenant as God firmly grasping onto us, while we sometimes or often flutter about in self-absorption, but God doesn't let go. And no matter how much we flutter, we come to rest with him again. It's an effective image. So it's not that we're enslaved to God, but we're deeply connected. In fact, we're dependent upon God. Our spiritual work is to rest into this dependence and maybe flutter a little bit less, spend less time with ourselves at the center of the world, the center of the universe, and more time with the universe that's God-centered. And this naturally will lead to deeper connection with God and with each other. And Jesus is getting at this, I believe, in his lifting up of the wisdom of the infant and distrust of the wise and the intelligent. An infant is completely dependent upon others, parents or adults, and is pretty comfortable with that for the most part. Whereas the wise and intelligent can sort of go off on their own and get caught up in their own thoughts, become self-absorbed. See, we're being asked to lean into our dependence and learn from it. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Paul's reading today ends with an acknowledgement of this dependence and in it, a message of hope. He opens with a futile cry, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? But then he closes with a prayer of thanksgiving. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We celebrate our nation's independence this weekend. We remember the timeless assertion that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among us are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we try to make that happen, keep trying. It's also a chance to celebrate our utter dependence on God for a truly ethical life, for salvation. That our unalienable rights of life, liberty, and, and happiness are for God's ends, not ours. We remember that only through Jesus Christ can we shake free from sin's cancerous growth. Only through Jesus Christ can we keep our own good intentions from being twisted toward earthly ends, towards death. In Jesus, we, like Paul, are rescued from the body of death. And that is a cause for celebration. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 7 in your worship bulletin, and on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and seen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. This morning, we lift up in prayer Shannon, Anissa, Jan and Chris, Olivia, Austin, and Carly, Thomas, Paige, Mason, Jackie, Frank and Betty, Amanda, Aaron and family, Fred and Judy, Kay, Liz, Nancy, WC, Mike and family, Rick and family, Patty, Susan and Harry, Gail, Linda and Lee, Mark, Kathy and Marcia for safe travel, Kathy, Douglas and family, Debbie and family, Mike, Judy, and in loving support for the Wisdom House, Moise and Natalie, and continued prayers for Sarah Edmondson, Jackie Soroy, Betty Long, Judith McAfee, and Carol Sue Greenwell. Are there others? We give thanks for the people of St. Peter's and visitors with us this week, even virtually. We give thanks for James, Doug Stroud, and Greg Taylor, for Mark, Mary, Laura, and Lillian Sullivan, and for Don Sullivan. We give thanks for our Daughters of the King. We give thanks for Fellowship Bible Church of Conway. 
We give thanks for the Ecumenical Buddhist Society of Little Rock. We give thanks for St. John the Apostle, and Chichi Castanango, and the Reverend Ava Ruiz. We give thanks for St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Cherokee Village and the diocesan office and staff. Are there other thanksgivings? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. This morning we pray for the victims of COVID-19 around the world, for Catherine, Gary, for Bill, and for those who served our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that, that we have sinned against you in a thought, thought word, word, and deed, indeed. by what of we what have done. done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, we remember his, his death, death. We, we proclaim his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await his, his coming, coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Peter and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. and Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your journey of faith, know that you are welcome at Christ's table. Continue with the post-communion prayer found at the end of your worship bulletin or on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.